and Refuel Your Life. It's the show where we um, interview, I interview different experts in different areas, but all my guests are uplifting, very positive, and they bring, and they bring enormous amount of goodness into this world, not only for themselves, not only for their families and their loved ones, but also for all of us. And hey, thank you, Sophia joined us on Instagram and uh, his creation joined us on Instagram. So guys, thank you so much for joining us and uh, listening to this interview. You are up for something really, really inspiring today because here is uh, a little bit of the bio of my guest who is joining us today. Her name is Reagan Griffith Aragonis. Did I pronounce your last name correctly, Reagan? That is correct. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So for those of you who don't know Reagan yet, here is a little bit of the bio of, of her enormous accomplishments. It's just a little excerpt, but we're going to go deeper into that. So Reagan has been dancing since seven years old. Originally from Denver, Colorado, she has been trained as a professional dancer in the Vaganova method at Colorado Ballet. It's so dear to my heart because I'm originally from Russia, so Vaganova uh, speaks Damn. to me. Okay. Uh, San yeah, San Francisco uh, Ballet or City Ballet in San Francisco, California, Boston Ballet, just to name a few schools she's been through. A devastating ankle injury early in Reagan's career helped her to discover her new passion, teaching and choreographing all styles of dance. That is how Ray of Light Performing Arts Studio was born. And in the span of, of three years, her studio grew to 35 thriving classes. She has become uh, the choreographer for Love Never Fails dance team, where dance is used as a healing tool for survivors of abuse, incorporating dance and somatic healing with the purpose of empowering and healing dancers and communities. With, with that, uh, Reagan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much um, for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. And just my personal, I usually add a little bit of the personal flavor to the guest's bio. I know you uh, personally, and I can tell you guys, uh, apart from being a professional dancer, choreographer, teacher, uh, Reagan is also an incredible mom of a five-year-old. Her name is Danica. We interviewed her on my other show, Unspoken Conversations with the Youth. So look forward um, the interview is going to be released in the near future we'll post you on the date so thank yeah. you so much she is the ray of, the ray of light herself <laughs> i am so, the woman behind the ray of light <laughs> yes and that's exactly what i love doing i just love to show people and, and speak to true uh professionals who are just amazing behind the scenes behind the business because usually people know the business you're in but they don't know the personality of the business owner so let's jump right into the first question okay. yeah sure what is your big dream and when i say that i mean it could be personal it could be professional it could be combined oh my goodness so so many dreams that i've had since i was a child but little did I know that your dreams evolve as you grow, not only in age, but in maturity and um, your dreams change. And so I just allow that, first of all, to happen. I don't get stuck in one dream because sometimes they change and they evolve and you develop gifts and you find a new gift and all of a sudden you have a dream. <laughs> so I try not to get stuck stuck in one dream because there's so many things and gifts that we've all been given but we don't have to stay stuck in that one dream and if we don't accomplish it somehow we're a failure because I think that's a setup really um but I will tell you that I feel like I've had a message from above and with everything that I've accomplished and with the story that I have which has a great deal of pain 
interlinked within all this really cool stuff that I've done um, is that I am supposed to be known, Ray of Light should be known as the place that survivors of whatever, anything that you have come through in life, whether it be anxiety, depression, abuse, there's, there's, everyone has something in their story, but that Ray of Light is known as a place that people can go to find freedom and healing and joy and a deeper level of connection with their higher power through dance. And that is truly my dream is just to share that good news that dance is a healing tool. That's the dream. That is, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, you said it so wonderfully and I love the idea that we can have more than one dreams and it's, it's always evolving. And thank you for bringing up the idea of a setup. That's right, it's another box that people put yes. themselves into. So I guess, I guess I should reframe the question for the future. Like, what is your dream as you see it now? That would be a more appropriate one. Yeah. Thank you, Reagan. You did mention uh, that your story involves a lot of pain. And of course, I mean, there's no one human being uh, who hasn't gone from something. I we would love to hear your story. How yes. and how your story is related uh, and brought you to the point of opening this ray of light and um what you're doing the work that you do in the world so what's the story uh, starting from the beginning from the beginning okay well i'll try to make this the short version and just hit on the points that are really going to resonate with um, what we're speaking to today uh, basically um i had a, a tough childhood um, it was a rough upbringing. I ran away to dance as kind of a safe haven, a place where I could be safe and release everything that I was going through as a child. Um, and so that's just how I grew up thinking of dance as my safe place. Now, when I was 17, I um, had fallen off my point shoe. So from age seven to 17, I had been trained um, as you mentioned, Donna, by um, very um, famous Russians, without name dropping, to <laughs> Russian ballerinas um, that danced all over um, in Moscow, Moscow Ballet. And um, I was groomed, if you will, as a, um, as a child that would grow up to be a professional ballerina. And that's all I really ever knew. So to fall off my point two, point two is where you stand on the tippy tippy toes, right? So I fell off sideways and there is a tendon that holds in all of your tendons and that tendon broke, it popped. And that devastating ankle injury was enough for the doctors to say that I would never dance on point again. And so for me, that was a pivotal uh, time in my life where I was broken, literally inside and outside. And I needed therapy. I needed everything I could get to be okay. Mm -hmm. How old were you when it happened? Yeah, I was 17. I was um, about to be 18 years old. And I had a number of ballet schools that I could choose at that point that I would go to dance uh, professionally. And this is what happened right before my career as a dancer. Great. So I thought would be my career. <laughs> that, that's right. So the dream at, the, at that point was to become a famous ballerina. That's and, right. And then, yeah. And after the injury, your dream kind of mm -hmm. got crushing down. So right. Of course I had... Mm -hmm. I had high hopes that it wasn't over, but you know, as time went on, it just looked as if it was true what the doctors would say that I could no longer stand on point, which is ballet specifically. Now they didn't say I couldn't do other styles of dance. I discovered barefoot dancing. I learned <laughs> modern and contemporary style. Um, I tried my hand at lyrical and West African and hip hop, and I was at least able to dance. I couldn't no longer stand on my point shoes again. But you know, if I had never fallen, I would have never discovered this whole other world of dance and so many other amazing styles of dance. Hence, I would not have Ray of Light where I teach all of those things today. 
Mm -hmm. I, I just want to thank you for bringing that up. A lot of people think that whatever happens to them, uh, they find lots of excuses, uh, excuses not to go for any types of dream a afterwards. And you see it, I can, I, you didn't mention it, but I, I, I can tell that you see it as a gift, the biggest gift that, you, that had happened to you. It's your injury. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing how you turn things around and the whole other world opens up. So right. how did you discover and how did you uh, proceed with this? So you started doing different types of dance right um, there's a little window of time well a lot of time that went by where I fell into a depression and I had some traumatic events happen to me personally in my life as a teenager when I really didn't have the tools to be able to process what was happening in my life. Um, like I said, I ran away to dance, which I could no longer run away to when I was injured and started hanging out after school, which I'd never done. I always went straight to dance after school and I'm hanging out after school and I just want to fit in. It's almost like being a new kid <laughs> at school, just wanting to fit in. And I got lost. I got lost and I picked a few friends that were not the best for me. So there were some experiences that I had to go through as a teenager that weren't the best that just added to the pain that I already had from the injury. So it was levels and levels of different pain and confusion that I had to deal with and didn't have the tools. So I looked for other things that were going to feel that empty place that was missing in that time, which was dance. Um, and I later discovered that I didn't realize the, the impact and the value that dance truly has on, you know, for, for anybody, but let alone for someone that needs to heal from anything. Uh, may I ask you, uh, did you have any support, emotional support from your uh, immediate family, mom, dad? I did to a point um, when I was going through, my mom didn't understand because she had not experienced herself. I had support from my father who uh, they say I am my father's child. I did walk in his footsteps and um, yeah. So what that, no, what that means is I, um, I did fall into some alcoholism just to be very frank with you. I learned how to numb the pain, if that makes sense. So my dad actually was an alcoholic growing up. But he did end up sobering up. He became my hero by stopping drinking and he became a drug and alcohol counselor. Thank God, because I needed him at that time when I just needed to numb the pain. And he had, you know, the right things to say. And he had the steps that I could take. However, he also passed away shortly after and I lost my father which again added to the, to the list of things that I was dealing with and again, didn't have the tools. Uh, my mom was there, but my mom is also a survivor. My mom growing up did the best that she knew how. And I love my mom to death. And, and you know, she always told me recovery will take the rest of your life. And that's true. It just, you're always discovering new things that you can do to be the best version of yourself that you can be despite um, adversities and everything that you've gone through. My mom also experienced so much in her life so yeah so, <laughs> I know that's a lot of information <laughs> that's a lot but but you know what I really appreciate your vulnerability first of all because we are you're sharing it publicly and I think right now more than ever especially the teenagers and especially the younger generation and I call our I call everybody the human race like kids of all ages um, because we never grow up of being a kid. It's just uh, whether we show it or not. But the inner child, if it's not healed, it's going to stay with you. But my point was um, that you mentioned uh, this rough teenage years. And you mentioned that your parents were helping to an extent. What pulled you out of it? What, 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 at the end, for people, because a lot of teenagers are going through a lot of self-identity crisis they are trying to understand what is wrong what is right like how do you know if you are associating with the right group of people or not you probably found out about it internally but you didn't know how to come like how do you dissociate 
so that right. people don't sit down and the peer pressure and so many different other issues. So uh, what what is the solution? Is it showing right. up in your so I'll tell you, Jana, I wish that I had the right answer, that there was one way to just say, and this is the way. But the thing is, is that it's so different for everybody. Everybody's experience is different and everybody uses different ways of healing and coming out of the dark place that they're in. And for me, I'll be honest with you, I had to hit what we call a rock bottom, which is a very scary place. And for me, I honestly, and the reason you hear me talk about God a lot is because I know God because I've experienced being in a place where I no longer wanted to go on. That's how extreme it was for me in a place where I um, was unsafe and I had um, just lost my dreams. That's why I love your show today because I don't think that I had the dream any longer. I'd let dance go and I was just lost, broken, confused. And so what I actually had to do was I had to go get extra help. So I got extra help when my mind got clear again and I was able to dream again and hope again and understand that it was not over for me, I connected with my higher power and my higher power said, I have something very special in store, but I need you to fight right now. I need you to fight. I need you to dream again. I need you to just start right here and go into childhood back all the way up, just like you said, Jana, let's go from the beginning. <laughs> and that's what I did really with my therapist is just go back to the beginning and write about it and dance through it and sing about it and write, write poems and, and tell my story to where I didn't cry anymore. And I could tell my story and I would keep telling my story and keep telling my story until I wouldn't cry anymore. But then people started listening and said, oh, I've been through what you've been through. And then my story became a message and then a story of hope and then people started listening and it just it changed for me there where it was just my life took a turn from being this is the end to this is the beginning so it was a new beginning for me if you will and and it was a wake up call because I was in a scary place and I guess you could say I chose life I chose life and so for someone that's in a dark place just choose life that there is hope for you and that God has so much in store you may not even know how close you are to that breakthrough and just to hang on it's on the other side of that wall sometimes it's right there so that's yeah <laughs> that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah thank you so much for it's it's so so many you talking and I have goosebumps in my in my in my body because a lot of it not exactly through the same story but i was very close to um saying bye to my life too it seems like that's what where you were and um the point i want to say i i don't usually talk about it but the point um, that i really want to emphasize that you really touched upon is asking for help so for teenagers for preteens for whoever, people at different, you know, like celebrities, right? Asking for help, I don't know about you, but I was raised with the idea that it was a sign of weakness. Instead, right. it's actually a sign of strong personality. You're holding on, you're holding on to the last branch because you know there is light somewhere. That's why yes. I love the ray of light behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is light somewhere. And you know, that's true because... I felt the same thing in my heart. There's light at the end of that dark tunnel. And I think that's what led me really to choose this name, Ray of yes. Light. Yeah, that's I, so true. I, I absolutely love it. And this is what I want to segue from here. What is the best and the worst advice you have been given in your life? Mm. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I've been given a lot of advice in my day. Um, the best advice I could say is just to trust the process. Um, I like to, I like the analogy that uh, when a 
seed is being planted that they stay under the dirt for a long time and it doesn't look like anything is happening, right? But as you're being watered and the sun is coming in, you're growing, you're going, people don't see that change, but to trust the process that you are going to bloom and you are going to grow. But there is a time where you don't see much, you don't feel much, you're under, you're, you're buried, right? But it's not that you're buried, you're planted. And you're going to bloom and you're going to grow and just to trust that process. Yes, yes. That's yeah. beautiful. And what oh. about compliments? If you can, if, if, if nothing comes to mind, that's fine. Something that is the worst uh, thing that uh, you yeah. can do. Follow that yeah, I, mm-hmm. the first thing that pops in my mind is um, when someone, if you want to support someone, Uh, who's been through anything in life, um, I would say the most harmful or hurtful thing even that you would hear is just get over it, right? Because it's not that easy. Um, Trust me when I say that sometimes (laughs) we wish that we could just get over it and it's a process like anything else. It takes time. It takes an action plan. It takes a lot of faith and it takes, you know, belief that you're going to get to the end of the tunnel, but it takes time with anything else to heal. And that's where dance comes into it for me is it's been such a healing uh, tool. And thank God I've been able to use it to um, find so much freedom um, back when I was in a dark place. And again, to continue um, having so much joy in my life due to of being able to dance every day and, and the kids and coming in, just seeing them being filled with joy and my adult students as well that are breaking free from um, hurts and hangups that have been, have been bogged down with for so long as well. Um, it's just a blessing. It truly mm-hmm. is. So that's what, that's what I was going to ask next. What is dance really for you? If you can just mm-hmm. expand a little bit on uh, how it affects your life, your body, uh, why movement in general? Um, so I, it brings joy. It's just, it's that simple. Um, it's like you can change your internal state through external movement. So whatever you're feeling, <laughs> All you have to do is put on a happy song. You don't have to be a trained dancer and just move. Get those endorphins going and just move. And just, I believe that dance is, it does something very, very special for your brain, let alone it gets the serotonin going. But it's just, there's a freedom that you find in dance that you don't find in any, anything else, right? Um, it, it is known to uh, reduce levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So that's something that I discovered recently. So if you're wondering, what is it exactly that happens? And this is part of the process of dancing and uh, feeling that natural high, if you will. Um, And yeah, so it it allows me to feel better physically and emotionally. And who doesn't want that, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, in fact, you know, you, uh, uh, Regan, can you tell everybody that um, I think your studio is so unique. I haven't heard about anything else like that until I spoke with you, because you work with different groups of people, not just a dance, you know, traditional studio where, you know, parents Mm -hmm. bring the little kids uh, to classes, but also people who went through trauma, through abuse, could you speak to that? And then I would love to show the video that you, okay, you guys sure. Thank you. Yeah. Explain about the different, like, who do you work with? Right. Like, what are the types of groups? Mm-hmm. So reason, when I was... Sorry, sorry. The reason why, I, I, I will just inject one more. The reason why I'm asking is because a lot of people think they, they are not dancers. And that is why it stops them from coming to the studio and this fear of being ridiculed publicly you know like oh i'm not perfect and this is um that stops us from going Mm -hmm. i'm saying us i'm one of them yes i would rather go and see 
<laughs> right. <laughs> well, Jana, I am a firm believer that anyone can dance. Anybody can dance. Everybody should dance. Even if you are in a wheelchair or you have a physical limitation, we are a school that um, has a special needs program because everyone can dance. Uh, when I was allowed to dream again <laughs> and I started dreaming big, in my head, I said, if I ever have a dance studio, I want people to feel safe in a place where they can come with any body type. Because when I came back to dance, I was no longer this teeny tiny ballerina athletic body anymore. I had, you know, come into puberty and I was a normal looking woman body type. And I had to learn how to be comfortable in my own skin in, in, a, in a studio in a world of mirrors as we call it <laughs> and mm -hmm. I in learning in different styles of dance found that not everybody is a size two and that's okay <laughs> and um, I embraced that fully and I, I remember saying if I ever open a dance studio someday I didn't know it had happened, but that all body types would be welcome, number one. Number two, that any physical limitation, or if it's just, you know, someone once told you in your life, you know you have two left feet. That's not a very nice thing to say because people dance to the beat of their own drum sometimes, and that's okay. Dance to your own drum because it's not about that. It's not, of course we teach technique classes, but we also teach classes where you can just dance freely. You can enjoy the music. We do flags, we do ribbons. And we also have a program, like you were saying, um, that is called uh, Love Never Fails Dance Team. And these are women that come together that have also experienced some type of trauma in their life. And they are using dance as therapy. Uh, we do body imagery, we do, um, we do prayer circles, we close our eyes, turn off the lights, and we just dance, we get into that pain, because you would sit down with a therapist and start from the beginning, it's almost like you would imagine that place in the beginning, and your dance, and your own dance, and dance through that pain, and it's, it is truly an experience that you wouldn't think uh, would do as much um, healing as it does. But I, when I tell you that when you dance through some serious pain, you come out on the other side with some freedom. Um, so yeah, so our student is known, our, our school is known as a place where students can come um, with any body type, with, you know, any <laughs> limitation, I guess you would say, or ailment, or um, they, they come and they feel safe. They don't feel like they have to have any dance background. We have plenty of beginning, beginner classes, I should say. Um, and we just have a good time. It's all about the joy of dance here at Ray of Light. That is beautiful, beautiful explanation. And I want to um, share, hopefully it will work, um, the little video that you <laughs> that you sent let now me this just... video um let me just share with you what this is and it's, it's exciting so i get excited this is a video that we're going to put on our new website as we expand imagine that we're expanding in a pandemic <laughs> Uh, we're going to a brand new facility that is three times as big as this place. We're moving because we have outgrown this place, which is amazing and a blessing in itself. And so we put together just a short clip of just a few things that we do. Um, and I hope that what I shared with you as well kind of puts the story together yes, and absolutely. the video that you're going to see. So, so could you tell uh, people where you are located, where your new location is going to be, um, at least the city that you are in? Yes. Because not everybody is from California. <laughs> I, oh, gotcha. Yes. Okay. So we are in Hayward, California. So currently we are located on Main Street. And you can look us up. We're on Google, Yelp, all that good stuff. Ray of Light Performing Arts. 
on Main Street in Hayward, but we are moving, we're crossing our fingers for August, being ready to make the big move and have a grand reopening on, it is on Mission Street. So with only two blocks away, <laughs> not far at all. Yeah. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, all good news. And yes, you know what is exciting? You, it's all happening during pandemic. We yes. are a lot businesses are going down and you guys are yes. thriving and it's amazing i just love the work you do so let's see let's see if we can actually share the video ladies and gentlemen on instagram first of all thank you so much for staying with us and for watching and uh, also in listening i would say if you want to go um and check the video later in the replay on facebook on hummingbird academy today you will see this little clip and it's it's impressive i hope it's going to work <laughs> let me see can you see it reagan can you see i it? see it yeah okay. welcome to ray of light performing arts you might ask what makes us special? We offer a variety of dance styles starting at age two all the way up to senior classes. We also offer classes for our special needs community. Don't forget, we have a musical theater program and an intro to musical theater class called Broadway Bound. We are open seven days a week and on our class schedule, you have over 30 classes to choose from. We are very active in our community. We perform at an array of dance festivals and events throughout the entire year. And everyone looks forward to our annual school showcase, the biggest event of the year, affordable tuition, multiple class discounts, and family discounts are available. We are now located at a beautiful new studio, conveniently located on Mission Street. We cannot wait to meet you. Please give us a call email or set up a tour and a free trial today awesome that is so beautiful beautiful just beautiful okay so i think it worked hopefully uh, you guys could hear us well yes did you hear yes. Regan? yeah thank you so much for sharing yeah absolutely of course so uh, we have kind of the program is coming to an end. Uh, we are like, there's so much to, to discuss and the story, your story is, is just beautiful. And I really appreciate um, your sharing that with us because it, it just goes deeper and you're kind of reliving. But I love the idea of the fact that the dance movement, especially I, I really resonated with, um, with the one that you said you you turn off the lights and you let people express themselves and uh, they just go take the pain away or dance the pain away it really really speaks uh, to me as a form of therapy it can it can help so many millions of people not just thousands millions of people and you don't have to be a perfect dancer just like you said with any body type any pieces of wisdom that you can uh, share like last pieces of wisdom from reagan um, with humanity oh boy <laughs> no pressure <laughs> it could be your own like well it doesn't have to be a quote from a person from a famous person it could be a quote from you something that mm -hmm. you believe yeah, I think I'll just expand a little bit more on what you asked me earlier um, uh, as far as the being um, trusting the process is just to remember that your journey is your very own and not to get caught up in uh, comparing yourself to other people because it's not going to ever look the same because we are created different and we are all created so special and different and unique that it's really important to allow yourself to just be. It's not a right and a wrong or a yes and a no. It's just be right where you are. Even if it doesn't feel, I'm not where I'm supposed to be in life or I'm not 
hitting the goals that I set my for myself years and years ago. It's just allowing yourself to be right where you are and trusting again the process. I say this a lot because sometimes we don't know that the the, the door is going to open tomorrow or the next day and just to hang on there, especially in a time that's so confusing right now. A lot of people don't know what's next is just to um, find the things that are giving you joy. Any creative outlet, um, singing, Jana, you know about singing, dancing, and I just encourage you to turn off the lights, <laughs> close the curtains, Turn on your favorite song and just be free and find some freedom in that because as we shelter in place, those are the kind of things that we need to do. We need to be creative and we need to take care of ourselves. Self-care number one. When I find a friend that is going through something and they're struggling to find their way out, I tell them to find three self-care activities every day that they can check off their list because we need to take care of ourselves number one. And just remember how important that is. If you can add dance to that list, that would be awesome too. And I encourage that. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. So many just, just beautiful pieces of advice from Reagan. I love that. The, so everybody remember three self-care items. Dance is one of them. And that's the advice from the our special guest today at Dream Big with Jana, inspiring you to reignite, refire, and refuel your life. And the guest's name is Reagan. Reagan, I never can pronounce your last name. Griffith Aragonis, who is the founder of Ray of Light Performing Arts Studio. Guys, if you have any questions uh, to Reagan, you can reach her, uh, reach her at the website. And it's on the Facebook page, Hummingbird Academy Today. If you, you can find her on social media. And Reagan, could you... Could you please give your social media handles? Or what's yes. the best? So mm -hmm. you can find us at Ray of Light Performing Arts. So there's an underscore in between each word on uh, Instagram. And you can simply just type it in on Facebook, Ray of Light Performing Arts, and it'll pop right up. Yeah. Is there, was there any yeah. other info that I can use? No. Or is that? I well, yeah, that's the yeah. Instagram, and, and they're very active at, on Instagram and on Facebook, I believe, right? They are, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope it was really, really inspirational, and you got some beautiful ideas. And guys, remember to dance your pain away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, John.